Knock knock. I can see the light. Is this useful or a gimmick? And did you know it also connects to an app? And what is this rather oversized fridge like to live with in a day-to-day -day basis? Well, these are some of the questions we will be exploring in this video. So the fridge we are looking at is LG's 852 liter French door fridge with Insta view door in door. That's a lot of words. Uh, the model number is in the description below if you wish to search for it. General feature of this fridge is that it's a four door fridge and freezer arrangement with the total gross capacity of 910 uh, liters advertised as 852 liter capacity. In any case, this is a fairly large fridge, which also means that the dimensions are proportionately larger as well. Things to consider when purchasing a standard benchtop uh, depth is usually 60 centimeters. This fridge is about 93 centimeters from the wall. So this is something that you have to be mindful of if the fridge will fit this space or not. Plus, if there is enough space to get the fridge in there in the first place. The width is also something you should take note of as well. Uh, it's about 92 centimeters. There are many kitchens out there where this fridge will not fit by width or by height. This fridge will not pass through a standard 820 door either and it will be a struggle to get it through a 1 meter door as well. Trust me when I say this. I'm the guy from Property Technical, my other channel about properties. I have renovated many a house where this fridge will not enter. If you have a sliding door like we do, that is one way to get it in. So something very important to consider. By the way, this fridge was part of the most recent renovation project I did and there is a video that I did about that reno uh, in the Property Technical channel. You can check out that video and how the overall kitchen comes together with this fridge in it. Now let's see the inside. I'll start at the bottom. The bottom segment is obviously the freezer. The temperature can be controlled between minus 15 to minus 23 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, you cannot make this part of the fridge a non-freezer, meaning let's say I wanted to make the temperature 3 degrees uh, to store something without freezing it, that is not possible. I don't see why this was not possible with so much electronics present uh, in this appliance. The bottom space is also divided uh, at the center, so we cannot put larger items there. The doors have nice large pockets on them, which is handy. The trade-off here is that the freezer drawers are much further in as a result of it. It feels like I'm reaching in to pull out the drawers. Past that, things are okay. I have never had any temperature issue if anyone is wondering. Moving up to the fridge section. Lots happening here. Let's start with the internal space. The fridge opens like any French door fridge. There is no divide in the center, so you can place as big a tray as you got. There is room here, going 500 millimeters deep and 830 millimeters wide internally. At the bottom, there are two uh, little storage spaces. At first I thought that those are there just for the heck of it. But it turns out it is seeing frequent use, possibly due to how easily accessible this is. The fresh vegetable drawers are on wheels and slides in and out effortlessly. To the right of the uh, second shelf, there is a portion that slides back to make room for taller items to fit in. The left side does not have this, and I wonder why. With regards to the internal space, there is ample lights, nice and bright. So when you open the door, you know you have opened the door of a modern fridge. With regards to internal space, even though this is one of the biggest fridge that you can get, it has felt like I can fit in uh, about the same as what we were able to fit in a 450 liter fridge uh, that we had before, possibly because the old fridge had smaller volume for freezer, while here it is nearly half of the whole fridge. A household that has need for such a large fridge may have a separate freezer. 
Not always, but dedicated freezers are becoming more and more common, reducing the need for a large freezing capacity. Hence, me saying earlier that this fridge could have benefited with the option to use the bottom half as fridge too. Moving on to the doors, now things are getting exciting. The left door has the chilled filter water dispenser plus cubed and crushed ice. This has been fairly consistent from functionality point of view. This far I have not run out of ice and thus far I have not had a jam in the dispenser either. The only improvement I may wish for uh, would be the speed with which the ice cubes falls. Uh, if you have a glass full of liquid, it will splash. Minor stuff? Uh, I think I'm being a bit picky here. The water and the ice dispenser is something that we use very frequently and with it, gone are the days of freezing ice cubes. By the way, uh, you do need plumbing to supply the fridge with water. Near the water dispenser, the panel also contains temperature controls and uh, more on that subject shortly. Staying with the left door, since the ice making mechanism is in the door itself, it takes up some space making the pockets uh, a little bit slim. If we pull the lever, we open the ice mechanism in case if there is a jam or something. Also in this door, there is the filter. Finally, the right side door. The window is the predominant feature of the fridge. There is a little latch that opens this smaller door. It's fairly effortless and lightweight. You can quickly grab what you need from here. If we look at the same door from the inside, Taking anything out from this side is not always possible. The openings are not big enough, which could clearly have been better designed, as sometimes when we are grabbing multiple things from inside the fridge and something from the door, it gets in the way. And I think it's a silly oversight by LG. So the verdict about the mini door is that it is very handy and very frequently used. What about the knock-knock feature? Is it a gimmick or do we actually use it? Well, the verdict on that is that it is a total gimmick. I know what is inside my fridge, as most of us do. This door holds ketchups and drinks and such. Do we really need to see inside before opening the door? Just open the door, mate. The lights will come on. So knock knock, who's there? A party trick. Party trick? Yes. Something that a flashy salesman will use to wow customers in the showroom floor. That's it. One outright criticism I have about this fridge is that the doors are not soft close. At this premium level, it was a simple mechanism to add. Any new kitchen this fridge is expected to go in will have soft closing doors and drawers. Even the ovens these days have soft close Sometimes when I brought out a big pot out of the fridge uh, with both hands and pushed the door to close, it slammed closed, rattling all the jars. Not cool, LG. Not cool at all. The fridge connects to an app via Wi-Fi. The app shows the fridge and freezer temperature and also water filter status. Also, we can set temperature from here. The fridge can go between 1 and 7 degrees Celsius and the freezer can go between minus 15 to minus 23 degrees Celsius. There is also a express freeze toggle and some smart learner features where the fridge tries to learn higher usage times and amp up its activities to match the demand. Frankly, to us in a household of four, having this feature on or off did not make a noticeable difference. We just don't have such a high demand from the fridge for it to learn to adopt. Would I recommend this fridge to anyone? Well, sure, given that from a price point, it really is competing hard. Case in point, uh, currently in October 2021, Wherever I check the difference in price between uh, this larger model and its smaller 637 liter variant is a few hundred dollars only, which seems like a worthwhile investment given you gain a few hundred liters in capacity. The price itself is at a premium range that in itself can be a detractor. Meaning the counter argument is that if you are aiming at a 650 liter ish capacity fridge, 
and considering this 900 liter only because it's a few hundred dollars more from the smaller version there are 650 liter fridges at about half price as well but if you are purposefully looking for a fridge near 900 liter mark choices are slim and the price is right the dimensions are uh, the one thing that i'd really like to stress again measure twice before buying this as this fridge can easily be wider or taller than what many kitchens have provisions for i myself have renovated many kitchens where even after renovation this fridge will not fit it would not enter through our front door and i had to take off the glass panel from the sliding door to get it in i'm saying all this to make a point in pictures it looks great and they always make things look so seamless the reality can vary that being said if you are after a large fridge the lg 852 liter door in door fridge is a strong contender with respectable track record by this brand that's all folks i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have any questions please do feel free to ask in the comment section below i'll do my best to reply back as early as i can also the renovation channel i was talking about is property technical where i show my renovation projects or knockdown and rebuilds and so forth i share learnings from these experiences which may be of use to you i'll see you in the next video until then you take care of yourself bye for now